I just discovered this ridiculously simple one-page website that's quietly generating over $17,000 every single month in pure passive income. Just look at these analytics. 1.7 million monthly visitors with a $10 RPM. And here's the insane part. It's literally just a random word generator. That's it. While everyone's out there building complex apps and learning to code for years, this basic tool is printing money 24-7 through nothing but Google AdSense. And here's what's crazy. I have absolutely zero coding experience, can't build websites, and I'm about to recreate this exact money-making machine using just one AI tool. We're going to let artificial intelligence handle every single technical feature, connect Google AdSense to start generating that passive ad revenue, add Stripe for premium features, and by the end of this video, you'll see exactly how a complete beginner can build a $10,000 monthly passive income website without writing a single line of code. Guys, this is the future of online business. While others spend months learning programming, we're going to let AI do all the work and start making money today. The AI tool that we're going to use is Replit. And with my code CC, you will get a 10% discount and full access to the Replit agent. I added the link in the description down below. Important disclaimer, building websites and making money online isn't easy despite what the other YouTubers are saying. When I show you how to build a website, I'm demonstrating the technical process and potential, not guaranteeing your results. These AI tools are legit and the techniques work, but success really depends on your execution, timing, and honestly, some luck. Most websites don't make money immediately and many don't make money at all. I'm not promising saying you'll get rich or to quit your job. This isn't financial advice or a get rich quick scheme. I'm just showing you what's possible with these tools and what you do with that knowledge is entirely up to you. All right, expectation set, let's continue to build the website. We're going to build a feature-rich random word generator modeled after randomwordgenerator.com, but designed with a cleaner interface, smarter logic, and foundational monetization features. Everything runs inside Replit and will guide the tool using structured prompts step-by-step step until we got something polished and production ready. All right, let's start with the foundation, the base app structure, and a simple word generation tool. The idea here is to keep things modern and minimal while making sure the core function, generating random words, just work instantly. So to get the initial layout in place, here's what we'll ask Replit to do. Build a clean, responsive, random word generator web app. Add an input field to set the number of words, default to one, and add a generate button that instantly returns that number of random words from a default English word list. Show the results clearly below the button, and all results should update in real time when the button is clicked. Once dropped in, this gives us a basic UI with smooth, real-time behavior. Users can type in any number, maybe 3, 7, even 50. Click Generate and immediately get a fresh list of English words, no reload needed. It's lightweight, clean, and fully responsive across devices, making it an ideal base for all the layered features that comes next. While random is fun at first, it only goes so far. Eventually, users want words that fit a certain vibe, purpose, or pattern. Whether they're writing, learning, or just playing around, adding control makes the experience feel way more useful. That's why we are going to add advanced filtering. This added functionality will make the generator not only more precise, but also more tailored to different use cases, enhancing its overall value. So to guide Replit, we'll drop in this prompt. Add advanced filtering options to the word generator. A dropdown to choose word type, all, noun, verb, adjective, Objective, input fields to set minimum and maximum word length, and a drop-down to filter by syllable count, exact
exact, less than, greater than, and all filters should be optional and combined logically when used together. This upgrades the app with targeted curing options. Now users will be able to search for just short adjectives with exactly two syllables, or maybe long nouns with a minimum of four syllables. These filters sit alongside the generation form and work together, or independently depending on what's filled in. From there, we'll unlock even more precision with character level constraints. So let's tell Replit, add the ability to constrain words by starting letter, ending letter, or both. Add input fields labeled starts with and ends with. If either or both are filled in, only generate words that match those criteria. All other filters should still work alongside these constraints. With this in place, users can now get really specific. For example, it's possible to generate verbs that start with S and ends with E, or just pull words that end with LI. All the previous filters continue to apply so everything stacks together smooth. But there's another issue here. Some words kept on repeating. So to fix that, we'll add this follow-up. The words keep repeating. That quick adjustment helps improve randomness and avoids showing the same results again and again during rapid sessions. Now that filters are in place, I am thinking about the kind of words being pulled. Not every user wants the same level of complexity. Some prefer simple, everyday vocabulary, while others want access to a massive pool of rare or academic terms. So to handle both, we'll add a toggle that switches between two dictionary modes. Here's what we'll tell Replit. Add a toggle switch that lets users switch between two word sources, a small curated word list, default, and a large extended dictionary of over 500,000 words. The switch should be clearly labeled and toggle the back-end dictionary used for generation. Ensure all filters still apply correctly to both modes. This addition introduces a clean switch right in the surface. The curated list stays as the default, offering fast and clear results for casual use. But for powerful users, like educators or writers looking for broader vocabulary, the extended dictionary gives more linguistic depth without breaking anything. And the best part, this mode switch integrates seamlessly. All the filters from word type to syllable count still work exactly as expected in both dictionary modes. However, not everyone thinks in English and that's the point. Whether someone's learning a new language, teaching vocabulary of broad, or just prefers working in their native tongue, it helps to make the tool feel like it's built for them. So to make the generator more globally inclusive, we'll expand it to support multiple languages without changing how the filters work or adding extra complexity. So to make that happen, we'll guide Replit with this prompt. Add a language selector dropdown with the following options. English, which is the default. Spanish, Hindi, Arabic, German, Russian, Chinese, Japanese, Korean, Latin, and Italian. When a user selects a different language, the generator should switch to language-specific word lists and apply all active filters to that list. Now that this is in place, the UI gets a persistent language dropdown that stays visible throughout the session. If someone picks a different language, the app instantly swaps over to a localized dictionary while continuing to respect every filter. Word type, syllables, length, starting or ending letters, all of that still works. The backend is also now structured in a way that leaves room for more languages down the line, so future expansion will be smooth and scalable. So to push the app beyond casual wordplay and into more purposeful use cases, and into more purposeful use cases, we'll add two specialized modes, each designed with a clear function in mind. These will live right on the homepage, so users can jump into focus tools depending on what they need. So, let's tell Replit, create two special modes users can access from the homepage, one labeled Pictionary Generator and one labeled Vocabulary Builder. The Pictionary Generator should only pull from a curated list of fun, drawable nouns, and the Vocabulary Builder should prioritize medium-length educational words with their definitions shown beside each result. 
These modes introduce different logic under the hood. Pictionary mode is intentionally simplified, which is built for a quick, game-friendly words that are easy to sketch out, perfect for party settings or creative prompts. On the other hand, Vocabulary Builder brings in an educational layer. It pulls in medium-length words and displays definition right next to each one through an API call, making it a great fit for learners, ESL students, and educators who want more context with every word. Some users land on the app with a clear goal, while others just want to explore. Either way, showing what's possible right from the homepage helps guide them. That's where a quick use case becomes useful, something that makes the generator feel more versatile and less like a one-trick tool. So we'll drop in this prompt. Add a section explaining the different ways the generator can be used. Include label categories, games, Pictionary, charades, Mad Libs, creative writing, prompts and inspiration, education, spelling and vocabulary, and business, brainstorming, and naming. Briefly describe each use case under its label. With that, the homepage now includes clear labels, each with a quick explanation underneath. It's simple but effective. Users get an instant sense of how the generator fits into their world, whether they're playing party games, brainstorming brand names, or just teaching vocabulary. To make it even more interactive, we'll follow up with add a small options that allow users to test the different use cases, categories, provided. This turns each label into a clickable shortcut. Tap one and the app will autoload a fitting word set using pre-applied filters. Everything adjusts instantly which gives users a hands-on preview of each mode's potential. Now that the app is feature-packed and ready to engage users, it's time to think about monetization. Starting with monetization in mind is actually a smart move. Even if ads aren't going live right away, setting up the structure early helps keep everything smooth, compliant, and ready to roll once the app gets the green light. That way, when it's time to bring in revenue, you're already good to go. So to prepare for that, we'll give Replit this prompt. Insert Google AdSense banner placeholders at the top and at the bottom of the page. Add a meta tag in the section for AdSense site verification. Prepare the app for live ad code insertion after deployment and approval. Use responsive ad units that adjust for desktop and mobile views. This step adds a special tag to the head section for the AdSense verification and creates two empty spaces, one above the header and one below the main content, where the ads will eventually appear. These spaces are designed to adjust automatically so they look good on both mobile and desktop screens without disrupting the user's experience. The layout also follows Google AdSense guidelines, which means that once the app is live and approved, you can easily add real ads without making any more changes. But some features take more resources to run and they also offer the most value. Instead of limiting everyone, the the better approach is to keep the core experience free while giving power users the option to unlock more through a premium tier. So to make that happen, we'll connect Stripe and set up subscription-based access. So here's the prompt we'll drop in. Add Stripe integration for premium users. Lock access to the extended dictionary, multi-language support, and specialized generators, the Pictionary and Vocabulary Builder. Users must subscribe monthly to access these features. Enable Stripe test mode to stimulate checkout and unlock gated content after payment. With that, Stripe is integrated securely using public and secret keys stored in environment variables. The full checkout flow runs in test mode using Stripe's test cards and subscription status is tracked through live webhooks. After the payment goes through, a premium badge appears on the interface and all locked features unlock automatically. Users who haven't subscribed won't see or access these gated tools. Everything is conditionally rendered to keep the interface clean. The features behind the paywall are chosen and carefully. They're high value, resource heavy, and designed to enhance the experience without taking away from the free users. Who knew a word generator could do all of that? From casual games to serious vocabulary tools, this build proves that with the 
write prompts, even the simplest idea can turn into something smart, scalable, and ready to ship. It's got structure, flexibility, and just enough polish to feel like a real product. And now it's up to you where it goes next. Got a spin on this idea? Planning to build your own version? Jump in, remix it, and make it yours. And if you want more builds like this, you know where to find us. Also, don't forget to subscribe. More builds like this are on the way. See you on the next one. Bye!